Someone who is in a procedural mode, they are motivated to have a step-by-step -step process. And here's what happens to them. When they start a process, they want to have a clear-cut process and they are motivated to get to the end of the process. They want to finish what they start. It's really, really important. And they have a set of beliefs. When you're in a procedural mode, you believe there's only one right way to do something, step by step by step, right? You don't want to be thinking about alternatives. You just want to know the right way to do it. Now, if you work with a bureaucracy, it's really important for you to use procedural language. Uh, have you ever noticed that if you ask, it may not be only a government bureaucracy, but if you ask someone who works in a bureaucracy, is it possible to do X? It is never possible, because possible is not procedures language. Possible is about options, which is about choices. And when someone has an options motivation trigger, okay, if you salivate when I say this, this may be because you have this trigger, at times at least. Someone who has an options trigger likes to break the rules, color outside of the lines. Now, if you're going, I don't think so, it's just not your pattern. Some people are options cooks. That means they decide one day to follow a recipe, and they download the recipe, and they look at it. And if they're actually really an options cook, this is what happens. They start to follow a recipe, but then they can't help themselves, and they start making substitutions. When someone's in an options mode, they're motivated to have lots of choices and lots of alternatives. But the problem for salespeople is people stay in an options mode, they are unlikely to make a decision. Because making a decision means eliminating all the other options. We don't like that. So part of the sales process is to show someone options, but then take them through a buying process. A process is a procedure. It has a beginning and a middle and an end. Right? And you can see you have different kinds of customers. If you are working with a couple, one of them might be into exploring the alternatives, and the other one might be saying, well, what's the right way to do this? And you'll hear both languages. You know, when I first met my husband, my German engineer, and he invited me to his place in Berlin, he showed me the procedure for stocking the dishwasher. <laughs> I kid you not. And of course, my first reaction, because I'm aware of these patterns, was, I don't think this uh, relationship is going to have legs. But then, 12 years later, well, and actually, I thought about it. You know, your kitchen does need to be procedural, because I went back home with me and my kids, and we had kind of an options kitchen, which meant if you want to cook something, you had to find where the last person put the stuff away, right? I mean, that takes a lot of time. You know people who have options patterns around their keys. They never put it in the one right spot for their key. So if they have a big handbag, you know what they do. Look for your keys, right? That's options. Whereas I have a procedural handbag. There is only one right place for my keys. You know, and a little later, my husband took me out because I wanted to buy a camera. Never got a camera because he kept showing me all the other options. So about technology, big options guy. So